so that way Trenton can begin to exchange the talent and, um, and um, strength that we have with uh, the strength and talent of, of our brothers and sisters in, in other cities. So at this time, what we'd like to do is um, give a warm, well-deserved well round of applause for our brother and poet, Brother Talabdin Abdullah. some unrighteous ancestors also, so uh, I want to make that plain that we want to, and I want to greet you in the name of my righteous ancestors, because we know we have Nat Turner, but we also know that we have a and so with Nat Turner, but we want to bear witness to Nat Turner. We know we have Harriet Tubman, and we also know we have those who are trying to betray Harriet Tubman. But I want to recognize Harriet Tubman and not the betrayers. And up to this day that we live in today, we also have those who are true and we have those who are false. And we want to recognize our true uh, strugglers in the cause and we want to support them. And we want to be able to expose and to bring to light those who are not living up to our true African creed. My name is Brother Abdullah. Most people know me as a brother who sells oil and incense on Spring and Willow Street in Trenton, New Jersey. Uh, most people don't know me, as I said last week, as a lecturer or one who would recite or bring forth some poetry. But like I said, I have images. And images pass through my mind in the circle of space and time. I've been writing poetry for a long time, since I was a young man in my teens. And the day, I have a question for my people. I see our brother Layla Africa is here and all praise is due to the Most High Creator that our brother made it here safely. And I'd like to thank uh, the Almighty for giving me the ability to speak and to communicate with my people tonight. I'd like to thank our brother uh, Jay and brother Tim and all those who support Razak's books for bringing forth this lecture series very important that we have these gatherings and that we come together to build upon knowledge and to build upon that genocide which is happening us to us every day right before our eyes. Sometimes it's very subtle and we can't read it, but it exists nonetheless. So I ask a question, what are we people going to do? if we fail to keep it wise and true. Where did all this craziness come from, making us so deep and dumb? Striving for the higher vibration, my people living in degradation. What is this science coming to? Humanity is feeling so blue. What are we people going to do if we fail to keep the answers wise and true? As I walk the city streets in the morn and in the night, looking in the people's eyes, living the devil's lies, life ain't no real surprise. Do you have some family ties? Black, brown, red, yellow, red, somebody wants us dead. What are we people going to do if we fail to keep it wise and true? What are we people going to do if we fail to keep it wise and true? If you don't wake up soon, they moving us to the moon. Technology out of space, 
so they control the human race. I hope you keep in pace. If not, you lose your face. What are we people going to do if we fail to keep it wise and true? Where did all this craziness come from? Where did all this craziness appear, filling us with so much fear? Truth is not so very clear. Peace and happiness seems to disappear. Time for us to really see the basic reality. What are we people going to do if we fail to keep it wise and true? Tech nines, Uzis, Coke 45, that's some other man's killer job. Trying to be the local mob, all you following is some pork eating slobs. Got no time to play no gangsters. We pounced upon by universal pranksters. Junior black mafia is not what we should be if we are the original people who would want to be free. What are we people going to do if we fail to keep it wise and true? Not trying to put my brothers down. We got to keep it real. Truth must be revealed. Hill finger Nike Calvin Klein, why do these people cloud our minds? Gucci, DKNY, Panasonic, the brain waves are controlled by the demonic. What are we people going to do if we fail to keep it wise and true? Here we are in a land controlled by the grafted man. People lose power every day in the doubles, sport, and play. What is the source of this madness in the center of the mind? People wander in a world that they can't even define. What are we people going to do if we fail to keep it wise and true? Homicide, fratricide, nutricide need to wake up to this mass suicide. No longer sit back and let it slide. Time to stop using the tools of destruction. We must build on divine construction. Shooting, stabbing, eating ourselves to an early grave. Soon there won't be no black people to save. Homicide, fascicide, nutricide, it all amounts to genocide. Homicide, fascicide, nutricide, it all amounts to genocide. What are we people going to do if we fail to keep it wise and true? Peace. P-E-A-C-E. -E. Peace. Peace. All praise of all people. The most high. All praises are due to the most high. All praises are due. So my people, as we build upon this concept and this subject that the Almighty has brought forth tonight through me, what are we going to do and what is the destiny of a people whose social, political, and economic life is still controlled by others? Where is our future? How are we to survive in the shadow of the pale horse whose rider is death, destruction, and chaos? Will we survive the confusion? Will we recognize the signs and understand the meaning, the sign of the time is that people are operating under false pretenses. The hearts are insincere. The tongues repeat a current lie. The minds are distracted. The soul is adrift 
in the zone of confusion. America, the greatest perpetrator of deception on earth today. Modern Babylon, laying false claims of being the example of the good of humanity. The land of Mickey Mouse, Superman, and Freddy Krueger. The land of Toys R Us and MX Missiles. The home of mass murder, mass rape, and ripping off the masses. The home of the slaves and the land of TV. Millions of dollars are made on the calculated misfortunes of others. America has more of everything because Americans are greedy. They are selfish and they breed selfishness. More disease, more murder, more drugs, more incest, more divorce, more suicide, more Satan worship. Yes, America has more of everything. <laughs> All praise God do. All praise God do. And the president, he's at a thousand dollar plate dinner telling his captive audience, that things have never been better. The Russians ain't coming. So I ask this question, my brothers and my sisters. What is the destiny of a people whose very culture is suppressed or exploited for the benefit of others? How are we to survive life in the shadow of the pale horse? When we at one time showed world, the world, high culture and civilization. Culture and civilization is what we as a people need today. We have fell victim to apathy and negative pessimism. We are the victim of brain drain, creativity shortage, and black flight to avoid frustration. We as a people want to run from each other and avoid our current situation. How will we change our negative regression into positive progression? If our brightest, most energetic, and creative minds keep taking flight to what they think is more greener pasture. Don't get me wrong, my people. We should travel and absorb the benefits of such movement on the earth. But remember, we should never forget home. Home is where the heart is. We should be working hard to bring the best of what we have learned back to our community. If not, our family will continue to decline with our most visible feature being our lost and culturally deprived young people walking from corner to corner with nothing to do. It's on us. Now, here we are in the land of America where the children learn history from a place called Hollywood. The deceivers pump out evil and falsehood by the second from a place that's highly weird. Hollywood, the maker of cardboard heroes and plastic women. The place that makes sin appear to be virtue. The place that would be close to see his own little wicked heart. Children and adults sit for hours 
watching the evil of Hollywood. Don't worry, the so-called experts assure us. It won't hurt the children, they say. It is all so natural, they assure the misguided public. Oh, how many people listen? But how many truly understand? What lesson does humanity learn from the teachings of the rightly guided ancestors? Some of us do learn and do understand the serious situation that presently grips our people. We know exactly the origin and reason behind this unprecedented evil upon the earth. We know why it continues and we know it will continue to escalate until we learn the lesson of our own history. Because he who does not learn from his history is bound to repeat it. Now we are at a crossroads, my people. One road is the way of negative regression. One road is of positive progression. The choice is ours. The time to act is now. Will we devote our abilities, our energy, and our efforts to further short-term material pursuits? Or will we commit ourselves to building a better life spiritually, socially, and culturally for our people on this earth in this day and at this time. Peace. My people, we must reflect and contemplate upon this. Now is the time to seek the truth. Now is the time to speak the truth. Now is the time to build with one another. No time to subtract. No time to divide. We only want to add and multiply. Now is the time to use our will. Falsehood build a mighty hill. Deceptions on the loose today won't let truth have a say. But reality is here to stay. Falsehood is going to break away. It's time to make a choice. It's time to listen to our inner voice. Subtile manipulation Playing itself off as recreation Evil suggestion Attack the mind from all directions What is the source of this wicked game? Moving humanity to so much shame The devil, he is dressed to kill Nubian nation lost in cheap thrills Turning away from our true sustainer Thinking the system is our maintainer Time to make a choice Listen to our inner voice Time to make a choice Listen to our inner voice Looking everywhere for direction Not knowing the righteous God is our protection 
Oh, we could use some divine reflection if we are to reach true perfection. There is only the one God to be adored. Truth should be our sharpened sword. This sun, my Nubian nation, lead the devil's way if we desire salvation. God, God is our protection. Oh, we could use some divine reflection. Watching the people go round and round. The lost Nubian nation must be found. Watching the people go round and round. The lost Nubian nation must be found. Let's get about finding that lost Nubian nation, my people. Peace. P-E-A-C-E. Okay. Okay. I'm all right. Okay. Praise God. I'm not gonna blow up. Okay. Yeah. In, in any case, I was doing some uh, uh, history uh, walks and tours. Went, went to the slave pens in the auction block. A lot of times people lose their emotional focus when they stand on the auction block. You know, some things happen to you. Uh, people understand uh, where their emotional position is in history. A lot of times we understand where it is chronologically, but you got to kind of focus yourself emotionally where you act with all this information that comes to you. I find that uh, people uh, basically uh, get into health and uh, nutrition, not for any sort of intellectual reason or for some scientific basis, but uh, because it feels good. And they feel they're doing the right thing. And a lot of us work on our feelings, and we're purposely taught to work on our feelings, and the ads and the commercials are geared to our feelings. And of course, we go to the movies and ask someone to play with our feelings for 90 minutes. Because that's all we focus on is our feelings, and it gets us in a lot of trouble sometimes. Because we're trying to feel good with the wrong things. Something that's white. Uh, I'm talking about white sugar, and <laughs> white flour, and white milk, and white salt. I'll get into white girls and white boys later. But <laughs> it seems as though um, we all think that we all together the same under the skin. And that's where the basic problem comes in. We think that God created all of us equal, but that is not true. 
There's no leaf on the tree that's equal to the other leaf. God didn't create an equality. The oceans are not the same. The leaves are not the same. No two people are the same. So where are we getting this equality from? It's beyond me. No, 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 no. Then we progress to some other kind of European logic. But first we start off with this understanding that we're looking for some equal equality. I mean, some places have a lot of apple trees, some people, places have no apple trees. Some places have a lot of vegetation, some places are deserts. There is no equal distribution of nothing on this planet. Black people have a lot of melanin, white people don't got much. That's just the way it is. We have to accept what we have. We are not all equal. We don't all sound the same. We don't all look the same. We don't all have the same habits. But this kind of reinforcement about equality and balance gets drummed into us. And then we start going against our nature because it's against nature to want, to, want this to happen. The idea is to get you disconnected from your culture. And to do that, you follow another culture's diet, and then you follow another culture's birthing rituals, and you're disconnected from your culture because diet moves with the culture. You can't move one without the other. You cannot have an Afrocentric plate and then wear European clothes, straighten your hair like a European woman, cut your hair short, the brothers do, so they won't show any kinkiness, so their hair can look like a white man's hair then shave a part in their head so it can be like a white man's hair. See, it's, it's totally disconnected there. The culture and the diet move the same time. That's why the Europeans disconnected us from our diet and put, them, put us on their diet, which is geared toward their biochemistry, which puts us into something we call a nutrition, nutritional restraint. It limits the ability of the brain to function in its upper limits and lower limits because you're on the biochemistry of the Europeans. It took them a while to put together their little cave diet. And it took our ancestors 100,000 years to put together our diet. And then we walk away from our diet and walk into their diet, which is based on their biochemistry, which alters the way our thoughts and emotions are going to work. Europeans put together their diet based on a lunar calendar. Africans put together their diet based on a lunar calendar, solar calendar, and galax galaxy calendar. Three different rhythms that run simultaneously in the African's body. Where our body's rhythm, clock, schedule is dominated by the galaxy, which you call out of space. Then, the solar time dominates us, then the lunar time. As you go from the melanin level of a race, the schedule of rhythm or time drops down. So the Europeans at the lowest level of rhythm, that's why they're down in the lunar schedule. Time moves with melanin. Melanin is time. Your taste buds are different from the Japanese and the Chinese and the Europeans. You taste food differently because of the melanin content of your cells. So you taste the full range of an apple or orange, papaya or, or mango. A European can't taste the food the way you taste it because they don't have enough melanin. Therefore, when you taste food, you taste another food that should go with that food, so you combine food completely different. Mm -hmm. You combine the food based on your taste specific, which is based on your nutrition level of your body. So you put together a chemical formula, which you call food combining, which matches your melanin specifically. When you eat like the Europeans, you're gonna limit the upper limits and lower limits of your thought, and of your ability to receive and transmit time, which puts you out of rhythm. Don't want to get all complex with this thing. 
But you have to understand that time is the basis for a lot of things. Every, or women know that about their menstruation schedule. You understand time. And when you eat food, it throws you out of time when you eat any European food. It doesn't have enough galaxy time in it, melanin-specific time in it. You don't find any soul food restaurants in China. They eat Chinese food, which is based on their biochemistry. You go to the black neighborhood, you find Chinese restaurants, the McDoodoo -doo man is there, the Mexican food is there, a piece of a hut, or whatever it's called, the dirty queer, everybody's there throwing us out of rhythm, out of schedule. Therefore, we're not in our right mind. Nonetheless, that disconnects you from your culture because your culture and diet moves the same. They do not move separately. So we start off giving a, the child a diet based on the European's biochemistry. So therefore, the cells have to work harder to get rid of the food and harder to convert that food and put it on a melanin time schedule, which requires a lot of burning of energy, which requires that the cells age faster. So the child's cells are driven at a faster pace to keep up with this low vibration force of the European food. And the cells just wear out and say, to hell with it. And the child drops dead in the crib. And you call it sudden infant crib death. The child drops dead from old age. Internal old age of the organs. The organs inside were old. Anytime you die, you die from old age. Internally. The drugs and the synthetics speed up the age of the internal organs. The liver's trying to keep up with the alcohol and the cells burn out and the liver dies. You call it cirrhosis or whatever you want to call it, the liver's gone. Mm -hmm. You speed it up all the, the process of the liver is trying to keep up with the alcohol or the acidic acid, which you call vinegar, mm -hmm. or it's trying to keep up with the Tylenol. You realize the Tylenol kills over 50,000 children a year? No, you don't know that. Well, let's not get into that, because a lot of people think the Tylenol is rather safe. Yeah. But nonetheless, we're talking about putting a child on a European biochemical diet, which has nothing to do about their blackness. Now, the food is put together by the Europeans because of their culture and they have certain rituals and ceremonies that they do with food, which you call food combining. But the Europeans don't combine food for nutritional reasons. They com don't combine foods like Africans do. They don't have birth, see, the birthing ceremonies. <laughs> The, the midwife had what you call today uh, similar to a bride and the bride's maze and all that little entourage. That's the way the midwives came. And they came with this whole entourage, you see, because we have to have the senior midwife, which represents the galaxy time, and the younger midwife, the lunar, and you have these different times matching what you call gender and chronological age, that sort of thing. So they came with this entourage, and they, the midwives were a technology of the family, just the extended arm of the family. First, I'm talking about a family. I, I'm not talking about a pride. A extended pride is what the Europeans have, what you call a family. A pride is a loose collection of animals that share a caucus in common. It's a pride. The Europeans have a pride. You have a family. 
see, we uh, 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 two families get together, get married, and have a couple. Europeans, a couple gets together and have a family. How can a couple have a family? The couple's born in a family. The concept is European. Two families get together in African culture and have a couple. In European cosmology, structure, a couple gets together and have a family. It's backwards. The mother has a birthing day and she births the child. It's the mother's birthday. You can't have a birthday unless you birth yourself. So you say you have a birthday. Not true. That's not African. Your mother has the birthday. She's the one who births you. The whole thing is backwards. So it gets kind of difficult to, when I get into science because science is the language of a culture. Nutrition is the language of a culture. The whole system I'm talking about is culturally based. A lot of it's still left over. A lot of it we still can grasp. Like uh, your mother, my mother, anyway, she'd say, look, <laughs> you do something wrong, she'd say, look, I'll take you out of here. <laughs> okay, I told you, I'll take you out of here, shaking a little fist at me and stuff. That comes out of African culture. Even if a person did something wrong and they were found guilty at a trial, and they say, we have to kill this person for what they did. And they said, your sentence is death. First thing they had to do was check with the mother. She said, no, they couldn't kill a person. Because she's the only one that can take them out of here. That's why your mother said, I'll take you out of here. Because that comes from African culture. It's just that our rituals and ceremonies are so hidden, we don't even see them anymore. The rituals and ceremonies about food are based on color and based on rhythm. That's how you combine food. It's the rhythmicity of the food, which the Europeans call electromagnetic vibrations. You see, they're just trying to hide the stuff from you so you won't know that it's African. Sort of like uh, the Morris Code, which is actually the Congo Rhythms. That's how they transmit messages. They're using the drum language to transmit messages on the telephone, computer. That's the African drum system. We're missing the thing here. See, in order to protect our children, we still have to go back and sign Kofa. You have to understand that Europeans made a deliberate attempt in their doctrine to destroy the babysitting system. Because the babies, babysitters, once they were indoctrinated, went to their rites of passage, they were able to go from this group to that family, to that family, they were able to cross high tribal lines and family lines, so it was never really no big argument amongst African people because the babysitters could go from a family to have an argument with another family back and forth very easily. So they kept the thing rather solvent. But the Europeans made a deliberate attempt. They said, we have to destroy the babysitting system. The babysitting system was used, what you call a daycare center. That was run by the babysitters. And you were indoctrinated in this order. We had older babysitters and younger babysitters. And you were indoctrinated in this order of babysitting, just like you were indoctrinated in the craft of blacksmith or silversmith. The Europeans said, we've got to destroy the harmony amongst these people, so we have to stop the babysitting system. And so they put all the kids in day school or preschool, and no longer did we have the babysitters. Understanding how to make a blend between two different forces here, two different rhythms. We do that today with a common kind of rhythm. You, see, you have a plant that's vibrating on one force, a potato for instance, and a cabbage that vibrates on another, so you put them on the same vibratory force and put garlic in it. And garlic changes the vibration of both of the plants, so they won't be so rough when you digest them. Because the garlic's going to trigger the, the taste bud back here on your paraco, and that paraco taste bud is going to trigger and say, I'm going to digest all this stuff like a garlic. So that the, the, the body doesn't throw the potato on one schedule and, and the collard greens on another schedule. 
because each one of them dictates their own schedule based on the chlorophyll content, you see. So what the people did in originally food combining was to try to mesh and put things on the same schedule, put a little netto in there, a little parsley, which you call seasoning, which used to be called medicaments. The medical application of the herbs. So they break this whole system of trying to make everyone solvent and harmony by destroying the babysitting system. Then we go in and we destroy the birthing ritual. Get you to be born by a European system. Okay. Which throws you completely out of harmony. It's kind of difficult to be black in the first face you see of the white one. That alone is shocking. <laughs> and then they're wearing a mask. <laughs> they're missing their clan hood. That's the only thing they're missing. <laughs> the lady is not squatting. She's on her back, which decreases the blood supply to the child. Her legs are thrown up in a stirrup. She has no penis, so the Europeans call it a womb. I mean, you're coming out of real craziness. You're even naming your organs with these absurd names, you see. So the lady's in the stirrup. The father isn't there. All these strangers are there. I mean, they just punch in in the morning and punch out. They have no spiritual connection to the child or the mother or the father. So they're bringing that spiritual force in here. And the baby, usually the black babies sometimes come out so fast that they drop them. They drop a lot of black kids in the hospital. The baby, you know, comes out there, you know, you know, <laughs> bam. Sometimes you just miss them and say, oh, damn, oh, uh, uh, birth defect. <laughs> Your fault. Kind of thing. The people that are birthing the child, can't dance. They can't dance. You know white people can't dance. <laughs> they can't dance so they don't understand rhythm. Absolutely. And the baby's born in rhythm. Absolutely. This is really a negative vibration here. Mm -hmm. It really is. I'm not talking about just that. It gets compounded when you get into the psychological effect of seeing uh, some milk in a bottle that's white. And here comes this white thing at you every time you're in pain, every time you're in distress, every time you need nourishment, every time you need protection, here comes this white thing at you. The subliminal kind of uh, seduction into believing that white people can protect you, white people can take care of you from just this white bottle of milk. Oh, yeah. We have to go back and claim the rituals and ceremonies of our race. It may seem kind of stupid. It, you say, this doesn't make sense. Why should I have a home birth? I can't trust God. I better go to the white man. You know, dial 4191, whatever they dial. Because you know you can't trust God. You've been birthing children for 100,000 years without the white boy. He just crawled out of a cave and going to tell you he's the only one that know how to help him. You're trying, to, you're trying to get your placenta, you're going to get some problems in the European hospital because they use the placenta. These white women eat placenta, aside from using it for makeup and the hair and everything else. You've got to return the placenta back to the earth. That's the completion of the spirit. You have to do it. So they, they break us from doing that, which has been done for over 100,000 years in our culture, placenta rituals, where you return the the shell back that brought, transported you here, you return it back to Mother Earth. So all of the spirituality is taken out of it. Being birthed by some people have no rhythm. They got on mass. And you know they smell. <laughs> oh yeah, you, you, know, you, you, know, you know they smell. Look at here. The babies triggers its pineal gland by smell. It puts it in its earth orbit. 
There are two ways the pineal gland is triggered at birth, by smell and by sound, because the baby smells his mother and hears his father, and that causes the earth spin of the pineal gland. Now the baby's coming out is gonna smell a white person, triggering his pineal gland by Oh, yeah. You're talking about a bonding disease. It's starting off wrong here, as you can see. Aside from that, we all know that the breast is a sex object. It has nothing to do with nourishment now. You know that. Nobody wants to use their breast except if it's across your heart, broad out there. You know, then, then people say, yeah, that's where the breasts go. They don't go in the child's mouth. Oh, yeah. We go from this rubber nipple, and from the rubber nip nipple we go to the liquid rubber nipple, which we call chewing gum, which is the extension of the rubber nipple. Because the people have missed the bonding, the nurturing, and that's why they got to chew the gum, because that's the extension of the rubber nipple. Oh, the white boy is playing a nice little game on you here. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Really. Oh, you don't think of it that way. <laughs> but I'm telling you how this thing is architect, how this thing is put together. Now, you have this rubber nipple. Now, we know that the baby's taste buds are in the cheek, and they migrate to the tongue and the parotid later on. And that's why the nipple is that small and sits in the mouth, so that the taste buds in the cheek can be stimulated, in which triggers the enzymatic reaction which digests the milk. But when you put the rubber nipple in the mouth, it bypasses the cheek. And each one of those glands triggers an organ inside of your body. What they're trying to do is stop the higher frequencies from being triggered. And they're doing it quite successfully. Oh yeah. You have this bottle of milk which, as you know, is nothing but cooked pus now, because it's blood anyway. That's right, sir. That's and once you heat it up, it's nothing but pus. It's a liquid plastic. The only thing they use it for is glue, casein. They use it for paint and stuff like that, because it's casein. Maybe I shouldn't talk about the content of the milk, because some of us like ice cream, and uh, some of us really think we're still from the ice age with the Europeans eating ice cream, ice cubes, ice skating, ice skiing. Are you from Africa, really? I mean, we, we're locked into this European attachment to ice and don't even realize it. That's why they have ice cream and ice cubes and ice skating and ice hockey, because they come from the ice age. You're missing the whole thing. They feel at home. <laughs> Oh, anyway, uh, the baby is given this uh, concoction. Well, we know it's based on the nutrition ratio of the white woman's breast milk, which is the lowest nutritional value of all breast milk in the world, which has a high protein content and high fat content, which reduces the sucking time on the nipple. <laughs> and once you reduce the sucking time on the nipple, you reduce the bonding time. Mm -hmm. Bonding to your mother, bonding to your culture, bonding to Africa, you get it, the diet, and the culture moves together. You can't move one without the other. So now we have reduced the sucking time on the nipple, which reduces the bonding time to the mother and the culture. We've reduced the ability to sensitize our pineal gland by smelling the mother because we've been smelling white people first. Then we turn around and wonder what's wrong with each other. Well, I'm not going to get into the fact that I've been in the operating room many times because I used to do that nursing stuff, insistent operations, cutting out the uterus, cut, help hold somebody's foot while we cut it off, you know, all that kind of stuff. And the white folks be farting in there. I mean, really, they be making little smellies. <laughs> and I truly hope you weren't one of those black kids who was born with a smelly. But I question some of us, you know. Anyway, we're back to this 
whole abortion of our culture. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We're back to being culturally traumatized. We're into a cultural crisis. And all of this didn't start when we got into kindergarten. It started in the birthing process. It started from the very beginning. It started from being taken away from the rituals and ceremonies that center around our birth and center around our nursing process, which is the rites of passage, nursing ritual. Of course, we don't even get conceived under the right circumstances either. Most people are more concerned about the contract of a car and they plan it and see how much money it's going to take and, you know, how much the interest when it comes to planning a child. Oh, you're pregnant? Oh, surprise. <laughs> don't, don't plan that. That's a human life. So we're not even into spiritually connecting with each other here. We're still breeding like slaves, mind you. Masters say we have night. Masters say we have sex at night because master want us to work during the day. And then we even play the music and the, the slaves at night time is the right time to be the one you love. So <laughs> masters say we have sex at night. Masters say we work during the day. Masters say we only go to the toilet three times a day, once in the morning, once during lunchtime, because masters say we can't pee all day. <laughs> We're still on a very much of a, a slave schedule here. It's despite the fact that we think we're so uh, uh, liberated and free because now we can turn on, you know, Mar Martin and, uh, and uh, you know, Okra and watch Okra uh, kiss her dog. I heard she kissed her dog on the telly, in the mouth, swapping spit with a dog, talking about a love story. Well, let me be a little scientific here for a moment. I'm going to show you what happens when the chemicals, uh, let me see, the knob here. Isn't that something? That's your nervous system. These are the chemicals that get inside of the nervous system, which we call uh, TIQs in the technical kind of language. They block the reception of the... Uh, of the nerves to receive impulses. They get inside here. Um, do I have a pencil or something there? Oh, yeah. All right. I hope it's black ink, right? No doubt. Because it's a white pen, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, brother. I don't like that. I don't like that vibration on me. <laughs> you, know, uh, you know, it took me a while before I could eat soup with a cracker. I'm not. I'm not lying about that. I mean, the whole concept of eating a having a cracker with, with my soup, I couldn't deal with it. it took me a while. Uh, yeah, yeah. I know y'all looking like weird, but racism takes the effect on you. I could eat the soup, but not with crackers. I just couldn't deal with a cracker with me eating soup. But in any case. These uh, toxins get in the nerve ending right here and stop the full reception of the impulse and messages, you see. So the, the child is not able to carry the full message anymore because the nerves are, are kind of blocked, chemically blocked. In other words, a normal amount of stimulus they cannot carry. A normal amount of talking a normal amount of looking in the eyes overstimulating. See, the rhythm has been thrown out of place here. So the child has lost the ability to track. That tracking thing you see on your VCR, your brain does this tracking. Mm -hmm. So the child's nervous system is blocked so they can't track like, the brain works this way. <laughs> Let me go back to square one. You have a brain stem. You have a cerebrum and you have a cerebellum. Mm -hmm. You have the brain stem that has these 20, 12 melanin centers on them. You see, melanin centers on the brain stem. You have 12, the Europeans have two. Mm -hmm. Your message, be it intellectual, spiritual, emotional, smell, sense, goes to the brain stem, and from there it goes to your brain. 
you see, your cerebellum and your cerebrum. One message goes to the left, and that same message crosses over and goes to the right. That's why you see out of your left eye and it's processed on the right side of your brain because it's crossed, but before it's crossed, it goes directly to the brain. In African people, we have a midbrain that functions just like your left hemisphere and your right hemisphere. It functions as an independent brain by itself. And aside from that, it acts as a switchboard. Therefore, you can process information in your left hemisphere that belongs in your right hemisphere. You can crisscross and process left-minded thoughts in your right hemisphere mm. and right-minded thoughts in your left hemisphere. That, that's in the African brain. Now, the European brain is not that well developed because they only have two melanin centers. Remember that. Remember that being able to think left-minded is an African thing and right-minded is an African thing. The Europeans do not possess left-minded thinking ability. They can only mimic left-minded thinking. Left-minded thinking is only completed when it makes the cycle of time, lunar, solar, and galactical. It's a matter of time, a matter of rhythm, a matter of impulses. Your, your, the, the cerebral spinal fluid in your backbone, it goes all the way up to your brain, goes into these fluid cavities called ventricles. It makes the whole cycle and goes back down again. But when it goes up to your brain, it goes around something called your third eye, which is an electromagnetic force field that puts the thought on galaxy time. This is an African people. Nonetheless, if you look at anything that the European has done with his left mind, you'll see that it wasn't left-minded at all. A successful left-minded process is structuring an academic course, a school that helps a person define themselves and solve problems, which is the function of culture. A culture helps you define yourself, define reality, and solve problems. If it does not solve problems, it's not a culture. Now, the whole process of a school system is African. That's left-minded thinking. The process of calculus comes from Africa, geometry from Africa. This is left-minded thinking. Now go back and just look at anything that the Europeans have done with their left mind, and you'll find that it's always been destructive and didn't work. They create a balloon of something in the car, right? This is left-minded thinking. What does it do? Kill children, break your... Ch this is their left-minded ability. Go back to anything they've done with their left mind and you'll see that it doesn't work. That's just an uh, airbag. That's all I'm trying to think of. I mean, anything. They put together some radiation to, to examine you, x-rays, and it creates cancer. Mammograms cause cancer of the uterus and breast. X-rays cause cancer of the uterus and breast. This is the European left mind. Go back to anything they've done with left mind. They create a, a ball of candy for children to suck on. And the children were swallowed and choked to death. This is their left mind. Some clown come up with the idea and said, hey, if I put a hole in it and they swallow it, they can still get air. That'll be a lifesaver. <laughs> 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 You can go through anything they've done with their left mind and you see it was a crash, unsuccessful flop. Because they are not left-minded people. They've run a big hype on you. Nonetheless, the regular nerve impulse gets blocked and the child can't receive the full message. This happens in the taste buds, this happens in the emotional system, so they are no longer able to process their food correctly because they cannot taste it anymore because you have cluttered up the the nerve endings with the chemicals, the synthetic chemicals, the hormones, the hormones in the beef, in the chicken, little girls sprouting breasts at nine years old, getting into periods that last five days, five days or seven days at 13, 
headed into a thistle or fiber or tumor, guaranteed. All of this is going on because we put the chemicals in the nervous system and they're blocking the message, blocking the ability of the immune system to function. That's the new buzzword, you know, the Europeans immune system. They just don't want to tell you melanin. That's all they're talking about. Let me just show you one of the people that's one of my concerns in this whole business here. Mm. This is the sugar demon. Mm. Notice that he's white. I like it. <laughs> all right. Ugly too. <laughs> now well, we know that this, the, the white sugar destroys the nervous system and rots your teeth and it, we know it does all of that. Let me give you some of the symptoms of, of sugar toxicity. What about this sugar in hyperactive children? What about it? Okay. This is what the sugar causes. Sneezing, year-round stuffiness, watery nose, rubbing your nose. Of course, we know the nose is related to the heart, so we know where they're headed to with that. And the large intestines. Aches in the muscles and head. And the children are not used to headaches. And they find that about 50 to 60% of children have headaches, but they don't know what they're about. And they don't know how to describe it, so they're doing all these reactions when actually they have a headache. It should give them a couple of aspirin, I guess. Back, neck, growing pain. Growing pain, that's inhibiting the ability of the cells to function. Makes them stiff, and when they do breathe out, it causes pain. All of these are signs and symptoms of sugar toxicity or eating white sugar. Even down to the ears, repeated formation of fluid behind the eardrums, you know, the ear infections. The red eyes, you call it. That's, that comes from overworking the pancreas and the eyes get red because the pancreas is not getting enough air and the eyes are not getting enough air, so they get red eyes. And of course, the bed wetting. Daytime and nighttime. And in recorded history, the only people that have recipes for bedwetting have been the Europeans. They've been peeing on themselves for a long time. I saw one of them older white girls on TV. Uh, I don't know who it was, uh, Power or whatever her name was. She pees on herself. That woman was talking about peeing on herself and made it sound like it was so fashionable. I have a deep end. It depends on whether you're a pismolean. A woman walking around peeing on herself. A pismolean. Talking about a D pins. I'd be ashamed herself. I guess somebody gotta wipe a little behind too. I know it's flat. <laughs> You know it is. <laughs> flat behind, flat ass tape. That's what I say. <laughs> now, I'm showing you the non-clinical, non-scientific diagnosis for hyperactive or attention deficit disorder. Mm -hmm. There is no chemical test for it. Mm -hmm. You can test someone to find out whether they have iron deficiency or zinc deficiency, but you can't test someone with a lab study of, of any sort to find out whether they have hyperactivity or attention deficit disorder. Mm -hmm. This is a social classification. Each test costs $5,000. This is a money maker. Mm -hmm. Now, as you can see, the aggressive behavior and the passive behavior indicate that you have hyperactive children and hypoactive children. In other words, this is a bipolar disease. Mm -hmm. It's sort of like manic and depression. It's sort of like low blood sugar and high blood sugar. It is a bipolar disease. And at any moment, they may go into the other side of the disease. They can either go in the manic phase or the depressed phase. Because the impression is made on the nervous system. In other words, you have alcoholics who have been, you know, abstinent from alcohol for maybe 20 years, and they'll have what they call a dry drunk. For a minute there, they'll just get that feeling and they'll be just kind of drunk. Well, they have the same thing from the chemicals. 
They go through a phase of a sugar high without the sugar. The problem is that when the person, for instance, has what we call it, the this impression of, of a euphoria on their nervous system, they get this, the drug and the, and the euphoria impression at the same time, they overdose on the same amount of the drug. So now you give them the sugar that makes them hyper, and then they're having a hyperactive reaction that's impressed on their nervous system at the same time, you got some problems here. But nonetheless, are they behaving like Europeans, or are they reacting to being oppressed? If you do this to any animal, put them like a gorilla, a vegetarian gorilla, or a monkey. You know, a monkey is the white man's cousin. They said they came from the monkey. They did. I always offer them a banana and tell them point to a tree if it's true. Crack of them. In any case, what happens when you confine the animal and put them in a, a, a state that's against their nature, against their culture, they're going to react this way. If you can find a gorilla and give him, uh, what's that, a Burping King burger? The, the, what's that, Whopper Duper, Boopa Boopa? Um, whatever the Burger King eats. I don't trust it anyway because I think it's gay. But nonetheless, if you give a gorilla what this Burger King character eats and the milk, the gorilla will start masturbating and start having homosexual activity. Oh, yes. Now, we're giving the child these toxins and they're having these reactions. We're giving them first, we give them a junk culture. Then we're giving them junk food. Because you're not giving them their culture, you're giving them a junk culture, which is a mixture of African culture and European culture. It's not even a true culture. Uh, it's the culture of the Afro peons or the Negroes. I mean, it's really mixed up here. They celebrate Kwanzaa one day and get a Christmas present the next day. It's very confusing. In any case, they have angry outbursts because they don't know how to deal with their feelings. They, you have to teach a child how to deal with their feelings. You don't take the child to the store to shop with you when you're shopping. You take the child to the store when you're not shopping to teach them how to behave in the store. First, you have to take them to the store when you're not shopping, several times. Then you take them to the store when you're shopping, but only go to the store when you and the child have eaten. Do not go to the store when you are hungry or when the child is hungry. Make sure you both have been fed because you know you're both a junkie. And you're trying to control this behavior. If you take them to the store and they in between highs, a sugar in just got off a of, you know a candy bar and they're just trying to ease into a soda, you're gonna have some problems here. Both of you should be well stuffed, whatever it is that you, you're slurping on when you go to these stores. Now you see that this depressed moods that, that, that the child gets in. This is a nutrient deficiency caused by bleach white flour and white sugar. It'll make anyone depressed because it drains the body of B vitamins. You don't have any thiamine. You don't have any niacinamide, which controls the moods and that sort of thing. You're drained, so you're going to get depressed anyway. So what is happening is they are labeling nutritional deficiencies as hyperactive disease. So now they're making a nutritional problem a medical problem. And now they, instead of educating, they're going to medicate. Understand that you cannot change the school system because the school reflects the culture. You have to change the culture to change the school system. And you're not going to change the Europeans. The only people who can change the Europeans is the Europeans. Because you don't know all their rituals and ceremonies. You barely understand why they put the fork and the knife and the spoon beside the plate. You think it has something to do with manners or something. Mm -hmm. Negro, please. <laughs> they put the knife beside the plate to protect their food. They didn't trust each other. 
had something to do with manners. That's how the, the instruments were introduced to them. First they had the knife, then they had the fork, then they had the spoon, because the spoon was the last device that they learned from Africa. They put it in the sequence of what they learned. The fork resembled the claws, because the European woman always was sexy if she had claws. And to show a sign of fertility is to put blood on your claws or put blood on your lip, which means you're ready to have sex. So the European women grow these claws. And, and black women go buy the claws and put them on. Because they're trying to imitate the European ladies. And then they put the red stuff on their lips, which they used to use menstruation fluid years ago. Because they used menstruation fluid to Christian ships. And then they switch to wine, and they're very high class now. But the symbology is still that. You didn't christen a ship without menstruation fluid. They used to drink it for diseases and to keep away colds and things of that sort. It was part standard equipment of the European doctor's medical kit. That's why the Africans, when the doctor came, they were scared as hell. They didn't know what was going to go on, whether it was menstruation fluid, whether they can get bled, because bleeding was done for all illnesses. If you get a headache, they're going to slice part of your arm and have you bleed. Yeah. Or give you some rust. They used to use this, what they call tincture of steel. Soak some steel and some alcohol and give it to you as medicine. So when these little plantation doctors came to a slave to give them some medicine, they were really like, oh my God. <laughs> you know. You know in any case, all of this is going on. The, the person's having a reaction to these chemicals, these synthetics. They're having reactions, and then they're being tortured by these reactions. And none of the diagnoses for hyperactive and, and, and attention deficit are medical. They're all social. It's a political classification more so than anything else. Now then, we do have things for it. I don't know if you can read this uh, thing here. I do use a lot of uh, glycine. Uh, where's my little black pen? Yes. I use this one. I use glycine. That's good for, like, you call anti-anxiety. It tastes sweet, and you can take it out of the capsule and sprinkle it on the child's food and help control the behavior. Sometimes you have to use up to a thousand milligrams of glycine. And I do use a taurine. Taurine is like an anticonvulsant. You know, like a person going to epileptic seizures. Right. I would use taurine. And this stops that kind of jumping action of the nervous system. It's not a smooth action anymore. It, the nerves kind of jump along. Um, I don't want to get too technical with that. And then I use phenylalanine mostly for uh, depression, mood swings, that sort of thing. This is what is used on hyperactive children on, on, on my side of the fence, nutritionally. We're going to use the glycine. Glutamine is used for craving, and it does repair damaged brain cells. And sometimes I use maybe 2,000 milligrams to take some people out of diabetic comas. It takes them right out of it. Mm -hmm. Give it to them under the tongue, comb it over. But mostly I use it to control craving. And nowadays, since I can't get a, uh, a amino acid called tryptophan, mm -hmm. I combine methionine with cysteine, and it, it makes tryptophan. But these are some of the nutrients that are used. Carnitine, of course, is used for the heart and heart disease and helps burn fat. You know, diet kind of control things. Lysine is used mostly for infections, and it helps rhythm. A person that lacks rhythm, I, I may spoof this up here and give them a lot of lysine. But these are the technical things to which these uh, amino acids do. I'm just letting you know they have more than one function. But gl glutamine is the known for its ability to help with memory. People that forget things a lot, forget that they're from Africa and want to go to France on a vacation. <laughs> See, as you can see, the taurine is an inhibitory neurotransmitter and works closely with GABA. GABA we use it for a child that gets out of control, can't control their behavior. GABA is used, a G-A-B-A, -A, that's how it's sold, gamma amino benzoic acid, but it's sold as G-A-B-A, -A, GABA, and it's used for people who just can't control themselves. 
So I give them GABA. Well, there are ways to replenish the nervous system, mind you. And these are just some of the things. On the herbal side, I used a lot of fever, few, and St. John's wort. I used a lot of those combined together, not singularly. I used uh, St. John's wort, fever, few, because it strengthens the nerves. You know, maybe mix it with some catnip or chamomile. I use all three of those together, not singularly. I don't use these singularly, I use these together. Sometimes when I can't, if the child's, the, you know, some children are finicky about flavors, and if you try to put the medicines up, they ain't going to take it because they can detect it pretty good. So sometimes I have to swing to a liquid melatonin because it tastes like syrup, and that goes in anything. Then you have to titrate the dosage and give some in the evening and some in the morning. I have to do this sometimes just so the child will stay off of Ritalin because their behavior is so, in, in school, the school is going to put the child on rhythm or the mother may lose her food stamps or her welfare, whatever they call it. And once the person has been on Ritalin, the military will not accept you. They do not accept people who have been on Ritalin because they think they need chemicals to control their behavior, so they don't want that. So anybody who's been on Ritalin can't enlist in the military, which is good for black people in the room. But nonetheless, uh, you know, we have to do what we have to do. I understand that. Well, psychiatry has moved into defining a lot of the nutritional disorders amongst the children and adults. Um, in 1963, uh, African Americans kind of caught America with its pants down, and we did these race riots or uh, civil disobedience, I think they called it, which was actually a counterattack to me, <laughs> which just counterattack. But uh, when that happened, there was about two or 3,000 psychologists in the school system. And then they brought in over 20,000 now. And they teach what we call outcome-based education. That's where your feelings are more important than telling the truth. You, they, it's, it's built in what they call self-esteem. Mm -hmm. And they teach all of this psychology in school to alter and bend culture. That's what the people who founded it said. The purpose of psychology is to alter and bend culture. And so they brought this into the school system and now they teach children that they can have a, a, a sexual alternative lifestyle. They can, uh, you know, like be uh, gay. And then and it's all right to explore your own sexuality, which is a nice way of saying masturbate. And now we have a lot of uh, masturbation disorders in our community. You should know something is wrong and you tell your little boy to go to the room and he smiles. Something to go off in your brain and maybe <laughs> uh, go in the room and play with something. Yeah, right. <laughs> Thank you, mommy. I just thought I had this here because a lot of people under, under the influence that they can run on concrete and asphalt. Mm -hmm. No. Mm -hmm. Dumb. The body is not built for it. It's too much pressure on the bones. That's why you have a lot of ankle injuries and bone injuries with athletes that play uh, basketball, because they used to play on asphalt. And it damages the, the bones and the, the joints permanently. You shouldn't, you shouldn't run and walk on asphalt or concrete. Find some dirt somewhere. Walk on that. Because it's going to damage the bone structure. And a lot of our children are just out there doing it on, on that. I'm just trying to make you aware, especially little girls that throw the uterus out of, out of position. That little hopscotch on the concrete, you don't want to do that. But I know, that, I know the concrete is easy to keep clean, so people use it a lot these days. But I just thought I'd show you some how these people look. These, these junkies look once they get hooked. I mean, they're really sad. They're always stuffing something in their mouths. They're either using chewing gum or the soda pop or the candy bar or the potato chips or the pizza or they're using the jelly sandwich, a pot fart or whatever. They always got something stuffed in their mouth because these people are out of control. They're, they're, they're hooked. They're addicted. 
and you know it. It's very dangerous to be around these people when they don't have any food near them. <laughs> What a sad scene. <laughs> These people are known not to have many bowel movements. Some of them even fart a lot. But they're known to, to uh, maybe have two or three bowel movements a week. And they have a, a, a rather, it's a, it's a smell you'll never forget. <laughs> you can spray roses in there all you want. But it's so much funk, you know. And they use a lot of the right guards and the left guards. And they're using dial nine or dial soap or dial nine one one. Whatever they use, it's not gonna stop the funk from coming out. <laughs> they are very stinky. Their feet stink, their breath stink, their bodies stink. They wear they use deodorant soap, they use foot eaters in their shoes. <laughs> they are absolutely funky because the chemicals in their bodies are coming out. And, and your enzymes take away the deodorants from the chemicals and then you smell the food for what it is, which is manure. And that's why they stink. They're nice people, but one should be rather leery of them if they haven't eaten something in a half an hour. These are the harmful effects of drugs. They bond to the melanin. They stop the melanin from working. They stop you from being black. They put caffeine in water now. And children get a buzz from this caffeinated water. They have so many chemicals in diet Pepsi that it's used for birth control now. You take a dish with it and it kills sperm. They put in the Diet Pepsi in one end. It gets rather mixed up. I don't understand. But it's just that when you follow these people, you're gonna have some problems. It's gonna be a lot of gender confusion here because the high hormone level and children addicted to hormones, it causes gender confusion. That's when they don't know whether they are black or white or whatever Michael Jackass sings about. Uh, or, or whether they want to be a woman or a man, whatever princess is puzzled about, I don't know. There's a lot of gender confusion marketed at our children with the, the Martin dressing up as a, a drag queen. And you know if a lady played that part, it would not be funny. And there are plenty of talented black actresses that could play that part at Shanene. But what makes Shanene funny is because Shanene is a homosexual. Yeah. Oh, they market this to our children deliberately. Yeah. That's right. And these chemicals now cause a person to be addicted to the food, addicted to the chemicals in the food, addicted to the hormones in the food, addicted to the rap song that goes with the food, and addicted to the colors of the food. Because foods have certain colors. The wrappers in the, in the frozen food section for the vegetables look one way, for the french fries it looks one way, for the potato chips it looks one way. You go down the aisle. And Lord help you if you dress in the colors of McDonald's. You're gonna make everyone hungry. Because it triggers these reactions. Seriously. And they know it makes it very addicting. Now what happens is, let me show you some of this uh, sexual embedding before I, uh, uh, some of it is rather obvious. Now I've showed you this before because it's rather obvious. Now you know which one is the woman and which one is the man. You know which one is the woman. <laughs> You know, some of y'all get really educated, and I, ain't, I, ain't, I, can't, I can't deal with this. <laughs> Good. Okay, now I'm going to show you some hidden sexual embedding, because sex sells the food. It sells it to the children, it sells it to the adults. This one was obvious. This one is not so obvious. 
This is a health food product, Vitacare. <coughs> now I'm going to cover up the part so you can see what they're trying to show. Oh, it's there. The visual impact of that is there. Oh, you don't see it? Oh, it looks innocent. It looks innocent. But it registers on your mind that way. Your involuntary mind receives this information. Your voluntary mind will throw it out and say, oh, it's just a commercial. But the involuntary brain will register it. And what's selling this product is sex. We call this sexual subliminal seduction, mm -hmm. sexual embedding. This is what it is. And this is done by the health industry. Oh, you think that's, that's interesting? Oh, okay. You know these phallic symbols, the buildings, the Empire State Building, all these buildings built as a phallic symbol? Why do you think they say, I'm going to erect a building? <laughs> Erection. Don't you get it? Okay, this is innocent. No, completely innocent. You understand. You don't see nothing there. Your mind does. Let me cover it up and show this penis sticking in this woman's thing here. Oh, you don't see it now? They could, they could have had the leg of that table anywhere. Why did they put it there? Because of the image there. It's right there before you. Oh, they play a real devious, sinister, slimy game. This is known as a homosexual embedding, by the way. This is a lesbian kind of commercial. Oh, you, you didn't know lesbians did commercials? <laughs> Whoopi Goldberg does commercials. Oh, excuse me. Uh, that's, a, that's a color there, isn't it? Okay. This one is not so obvious. Because you, you know that looks like a sperm. Right? Right, right. And it registers on your mind. It really does. Now I'm going to have the penis ejaculating the sperm. Oh, they know what they're doing. Haven't you ever heard the word screw? <laughs> they got a screw right there. How obvious can it get? And it's registering on your involuntary brain. I, you're going to get screwed. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh, this this is done. This is how they sell things. It's a very sick kind of way of doing it. I only put this one up here because uh, I just want people to be aware that there's racism in the industry. That's all. Because you know the brothers down the bottom and the white person on the top. <laughs> you know, you, you see the brother down there. You see him. Down. You know devil food cake is chocolate and angel food cake is white. You, 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 you. Sick. It gets worse. And why people don't see this as a homosexual commercial always gets me. naked white boys. You know what they're doing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But, but all this is kind of a, a easy uh, to look at when you look at it in retrospect. But when it's coming at you for the first time, you, you, you probably miss it. Now, you can look in the, in the child's eyes and see what's going on as well. You can just look for where the veins are, which we call pointer veins. Mm -hmm. uh, it's according to how much the system has degenerated. See, there's a whole thing built into the, when they destroyed the babysitting system and uh, kind of uh, made us victimize ourselves, victimize our history, victimize, we victimize each other quite well. You know, putting down the race, that's all we do is victimize our race. You know black people ain't going to get together. You know black people. We're all sitting around victimizing the race, victimizing our history. Uh, we had together, and then these white people came, so therefore we were doing something wrong. 
You know, something was wrong in Africa that we felt. We victimized our own history. And you know right well, for white people to attack you, you don't have to do anything wrong. They demonstrate this every day. You don't have to break a law to be in jail. What's wrong got to do with white people? <laughs> What's right got to do with it, as a matter of fact? But I'm just trying to point out the fact that why are you looking for something that your culture was doing wrong when you're dealing with white people? You can do something right and they'll do, do you in. You can be on the job, punching every day, do your word, and you come in the next morning, you got a pink slip. And then they try to make you feel that something maybe, maybe I'm not spiritual enough, maybe I'm not moral enough, maybe I'm morally weak. Maybe, then you start victimizing yourself, just like a slave. No, you just point to the criminal for what it is. But nonetheless, we look in the eyes and this points to things. It points to the weakness within the child's system. Veins down the lower part of the eye at 5, 6 o'clock, 7 o'clock, like the eyes of the clock, that's reproductive problems. Now, long vein at 11 o'clock, well, no, y'all don't want to do homosexual diagnosis because then because, you know, everybody has them in their family. And then people act like, there's nobody gay in my family. You know, and I, I walk and see these people's family, and I'm saying, really? Little Willie is kind of, you know. <laughs> you know. <laughs> but in any case, you can look in the child's eye. Remember I said red in the eyes, that's the oxygen deficiency. They're not getting enough oxygen to their eyes, so they're not getting ox enough oxygen to their brain. It's like a B vitamin deficiency. When you have a B vitamin deficiency, your te cheeks turn red. And the Europeans make a fashion out of disease. And so they make their cheeks red. So a lot of the diseases are fashions. So when you're dealing in European medicine, it gets kind of hard. I'll, I'll, I'll say something is disease, and you associate it with fashion. Mm -hmm. Like when one time a mole was a fashion, and ladies used to put moles on their face. But that's carbon waste deposit, sym symptomatic for acid system, like warts that indicate acidity. Uh, so we start making these fashions out of diseases, and it becomes a problem here. So looking at the eyes is one of the indicators that we can use to uh, help uh, with disease diagnosing. But when you're looking at someone suffering from slavery trauma and nutritional restraints, you're looking at a really disordered person here. That's where they, they move to make the, the man outside of the family and the woman can't rely, the black woman can't rely on the black man for a livelihood or a job. She relies on the white man for livelihood and a job, you see. Right. And then they teach the sister to say, I don't need no man. That means black man, but they need the white man because the white man is giving them the job. You see, so what they're saying is, I don't need no black man. And the black man hears that and says, well, she don't need me. She just needs my sexual services. Mm -hmm. So he stays away from the family or stay away from the sister and gets her involved in some kind of political game with the child, mm -hmm. which throws the child off balance. Because all he sees is his father coming for sexual purposes, not for spiritual purposes, not for unity purposes. And the sister say, well, I don't need him around. He's not going to be spirituality and unity and all this to the child. All he's going to do is bring battering to me and sexual... So, and so say, well, I don't need him in the house. Mm -hmm. But the child needs the, 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 the father in contact, whether he's in the house or not. But then we are going through this whole ritual of a slave structuring of a family. We just keep playing the drama over and over again. Like Franz Fanon says, once you get this thing in motion, you don't have to worry about it anymore. The slaves will keep it going on. Once you set it in motion. Once you get the person to believe that there's some soul in a pig's foot? I think a soul would be in your body or in your heart, but in a foot? I mean, that's kind of weird in itself. We don't check to see whether the pig has bunions, corns, athlete's foot, or nothing. We just want to know whether we can put some gravy on it, some hot sauce. And then we associate soul, spirit, with a pig's foot and call that soul food. I'm telling you, we got this whole thing backwards here.
Well, yeah, you know, I, I was with my brother, and he had a pig foot in one hand and a beer in the other. Asking me, do I think he's doing better? <laughs> I'm his brother. I said, yeah, you're doing better. At least you don't fall asleep with it in your mouth like you used to. <laughs> it gets kind of hard to be around. <laughs> you know, you know how people be eating food and they fall asleep food in their mouth. He used to fall asleep with the pig, the skin still his foot in his mouth. It's, this is not, it's just a, it's just a black thing. Y'all not with me. This is a black thing here. <laughs> but he is doing better. <laughs> he just stay awake. <laughs> All the way to, down to the last toe. <laughs> I'm not going to talk about my family. God love it. <laughs> not me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So here we go with the conception of the child and how it leaves this imprint on us forever. Because we collapse around the melanin in, in our system and, and, and in the fetus position. That's when the, when the, in the fetus position when you collapse around the melanin. And the melanin gives your nerves and your muscles and your bones directions and tells them what to do. It lays out the print, the blueprint. And the print is blue to signify the pineal gland, which makes blue, and that's why they have blue print. It could be black, you know. It could be any color. It could be green, but they make blue print because they know that this is impression that if you use a melanin color, that means this thing is going to be forever. So your body collapses around the melanin and gets the blueprint and gets the direction and this leaves the print on your body permanently. So even if they cut off your leg, because the melanin print is still there, you're going to have a ghost pain in that leg. You hear somebody without a foot say, my foot hurts. You say, what is foot? What's foot are you talking about? That's the melanin. But the Europeans don't want you to say melanin, they don't want you to think melanin. they rather you think antioxidant immunity and all of those are melanin based chemical reactions in the body they don't want to use the word melanin because you might say melanin melanin the more melanin the more civilized the more melanin the more moral the more melanin the more spiritual the more melanin the more psychic the more melanin the more ability you can store information the more melanin you the more melanin the more superior mm. see that's going to lead them down the wrong trail they just want to think that you some misguided cousin of a monkey mm. And there's no way a brother going to fall out of a tree like a white boy. Now, I can see the white monkey falling out of the tree and all that, but not no brother. He ain't going to fall out of no tree. Uh -uh. So we realize if a monkey fell out of the tree and became a white man, it had to be a white monkey. Anyway. <laughs> so we have this impression left on our nervous system by the melanin. And it can divide the system up into trimesters. You have the first trimester of pregnancy, the second and third. So look how the pregnancy progressed of the child. I look at the eyebrows to find out how the, 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 the trimesters progressed. And just a simple matter of feeling the texture of the eyebrows. If you see some hairs that are missing there, you say, oh, there are problems in the second trimester. The trust second tri trimester is dominated by the mesomorphic layer, mesoderm layer of the tissue. You have the mesoderm, the ectoderm, these are layers like you have an egg and the outside we call it the ectoderm and that little clear like skin in there, we call it the mesoderm and inside we would call that the endoderm. And we just use these, these different words in my business to keep you ignorant so you won't go rely on yourself, you have to rely on me because I have the vocabulary. So what I've done is I've switched it from your vocabulary to my vocabulary, and that puts me in charge and makes you my servant. And this is written in the Hippocratic Oath for you not to know anything and me to know everything and not to tell you anything. The assumption is that the more you go to a doctor, the more you learn. If you go to 10 doctors and he goes to one, you should know 10 times as much. But both of y'all get together swapping ignorant sandwiches because you didn't learn See, because they have kept the information to themselves and it's built in the Hippocratic Oath, it's stated in there that we're not going to share this and it's our right to rip you off as for as much money as we like. It's written in the Hippocratic Oath along with some homosexual things about I won't molest 
men and women. And all the doctors were men, so why they had the pleasure not going to have sex with their male clients? Or you're missing the fact that hip the hypocrisy was homosexual. You're still going around talking about oh, Miss George Washington, the mother of your country, gay blade if there ever was one. <laughs> Calling him your father. George is so busy sleeping with other critters. Uh, amazing little fellow with his wooden teeth. <laughs> Rided them out of his mouth eating sugar. Uh, of the child as well as the mother, as well as the men. You can always determine the uh, difficulty they had during the, the uh, gestation period. But we're trying to uh, get back to where we should be. We're trying to get to some of these foods that uh, people are not used to calling foods. Uh, we don't kind of know these names too much. Um, if I get down to the grains, we have the marathas, amaranthus, we have the quinoa, the spelt, the kamut. These are out of e Egypt and Africa, kamut and spelt. And the wild rice and the test and these other whole grains. We, we're into what we call the wheat dependency, which is what the Europeans use to get you off of your native crops. They created what we call wheat dependency, and they control the wheat in the world. So they bring the corporations over through the United Nations and they bring Angie Mammy and, and Uncle Ben and they, you know, and they teach them how to do these uh, recipes. And they switch the local natives off of their local crops and onto wheat. And now they become wheat dependent. They switch even the cattle off of the local crops and put them on wheat. And who controls the wheat? the Great Plains Wheat Association of America, which is a European-based corporation like the, the Federal Reserve. You, you realize the Europeans still control America? You, you know they pay eight, eight, over $18 million a year to France because they lease in part of Louisiana and all that. You realize that England still owns Staten Island. They still pay money to England every year. This is still a European country. I, I, I think that we're under the assumption that this is America. Oh, no, 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 no. So we are switched into being wheat dependent. We eat more wheat now than we have ever eaten. And wheat is very high in acid, which means it burns up your nutrients at a faster rate. It makes your skin very acid. It makes skin dry. It's so acid it bleaches your hair with sulfur. Your hair turns white, which we call gray. You see, this is a symptom of a wheat-dependent people. And once you get the people dependent on wheat, then you say, well, you need to reduce the wheat for yourself, so now you need to get this equipment. And then they sell you the equipment, so you have to produce at a higher rate, now we'll sell you the synthetic fertilizers. Now you can, you're in the marketplace now, but you have to stop growing your, your regular crops if you used to, and use this good soil for the wheat so you can get the equipment, so you can make money, and won't be dependent. But no crop has made any African country independent in history. So it makes you further dependent, and this is how they get the land. And of course, all European technology is twice as damaging to women than men. If the European brings in a tractor, the man has to operate the tractor for the European. And that means that the black lady has to grow, take care of the garden by herself, so her workload increases. If they bring in more technology to help her have more wheat, who's going to carry the water? So now she has to carry twice as much water. So the technology destroys the women first, especially the European technology. It's always harder on the women, a European technology. You can trace all of them from the computer to the automobile, you name it. It's always most devastating on the woman first. This is a chauvinistic country. All diagnoses of uh, techniques are used and, de and developed on men. They diagnose all women as if they're men in this country and all over the world. They diagnose children the same as they diagnose adults. Children and women express symptoms differently from men. Totally different. There's a different rhythmicity involved. 
but we only study the disease symptoms of men and the diagnostic the treatment for men and we apply them to women and children because of the chauvinistic nature of medicine and all i'm trying to say is it's a technology that was produced by men for men started by a corporation owned by men that's funded by men sort of like your first congress it was only men and most of them were gay so it has the whole flavor of a homosexual organization I don't want to get into that, but that's part of the sexual embedding that you see. Now you see the rise of the lesbian takeover in our industry, in film. You got that dyke, uh, Whoopi Goldberg, and you got this Alice Walker. You have all these lesbians taking over, your Tina Turners and all these people. But in any case, I don't want to talk about that. How much time do I have, brother? Okay. So we, we, we're into getting back. I can't get to the wheat. It, it doesn't make sense. Children learn that water and oil don't go together. They learn that in school. And then with our grown-up self, we mix oil and water together. Because wheat is nothing but water. Potato is nothing but water. And now we're frying the potato, putting butter on the bread, which comes out of Greek eating ceremonies, where they used to put the grease on the bread so they could get the strength of the animals like they would put deer grease on bread so they could run like a deer. This is how the European thought. They put wild pig grease on bread so they can get the power of a wild boar. And then they developed to putting uh, olive oil on bread and then later on they got into this milk grease called butter. But all this comes out of them putting grease on the bread to make it soft because they didn't have teeth to chew it. So we're following their rituals and ceremonies and not realizing the spirit that we call before us. So we have to go back, get back to this uh, diet, start eating foods that taste different, stimulate your taste buds, different cause a different thought process. Because now you're eating a food that was eaten by, uh, for 100,000 years by your ancestors. Now you're calling all this spiritual force to you. Things are gonna start happening here. Because you're waking up, they say, oh my God, the child of Africa has returned. <laughs> you see? You're waking up all of this kind of energy. You're waking up these cycles in your body because our calendars were made for three different cycles, a lunar, solar, and a galaxy cycle. We call it a time spell calendar. So we incorporated all this in our diet and food combining. It's a very kind of symphonic kind of a thing to, to be African and, and to eat like an African. Don't be ashamed. I mean, I know you want to have manners and all and have your little knife close to your food, you know, like somebody's going to steal and you're going to stab them in the hand, you know, whatever. I know you're going to still use those kind of protocols, but don't do some stupid thing like putting butter grease on your bread. And you don't want to eat a dead chicken with, with, with something that a chicken don't eat. You've never seen a chicken eat collard greens, so you can't eat it chicken with collard greens. You eat what the chicken eats. The, key, the chicken would eat corn, yeah. The seeds. It would eat the seeds, the sesame seeds, protein. See, the chicken's showing you what goes with chicken, but now you're putting things with chicken that the chicken didn't even eat. I mean, it doesn't really make sense. And you know right well you've never seen a Coca-Cola tree, because you know this is not even natural. <laughs> You, you know it's not, you've never seen a Twix tree or this, uh, whatever those candy bars are. You, it, it's, these things are not even in nature. Eating these penis-shaped candy bars. Brothers sucking on candy bars. It's very grotesque. I mean, it's, it's very, it's really sick to, for a sister to eat a donut. I mean, that's symbolic of the vagina. Why do you want to eat one of those uh, crispy, uh, whatever it is? And, and your body put round shaped, sexual shaped things with the, the semen oozing out of it. The, the, the uh, ooh, ah. Uh. I mean, people eating these foods that, that are, uh, how, how, how can you, uh, how, how can you, how can you put mayonnaise on a hot dog? Can't something register in your brain not to do that? Why you want to put a hot dog between two buns? Why you want to eat buns? I can't eat no buns. I don't care if you put honey on the buns. I'm not going to eat buns. 
If that thing was a fart, you would stop eating it. <sighs> we got to go back. We got to use our African sense. We've got to start listening to this melanin and put our foods together properly and eat properly. Certain things that we are doing are just flat out crazy. It really is. I know people say, Doc, lighten up, but I'm just trying to say, uh, uh, if you see yourself the way I see yourself, <laughs> you know, I say, what are these people doing? They're going to pick the cotton and eat it too? I mean, how far are you going to go with the slave thing? But anyway, I'm supposed to be scientific at all. <laughs> I think uh, maybe I should answer some questions, eh? Uh, let me answer some questions. I never get through any of these things I bring, you know. Oh, Joyce G. Thank you. That's my sister. I had uh, three questions. I don't know if you want to handle all of them, but they're all short okay. questions. Um, uh, everybody that I know thinks uh, that an African remedy for lowering a fever is to um, rub the body down in, in um, alcohol, rubbing alcohol. Are we doing more harm than good? Um, and a friend of mine wants to know how he can, um, he's become hearing impaired as a result of getting water in his ear. And I heard you mention something about coenzyme Q10. Mm -hmm. I wasn't sure what you were saying about that. Mm -hmm. uh, using the ethanol, the alcohol on the skin destroys the oil-soluble uh, vitamin A, D, E, and K. It's more dangerous because it gets in the blood system and therefore destroys uh, the brain as well as some of the nervous system. It's not something that you really want to do. If you cannot put the substance in your eye, then more than likely you shouldn't even put it in your body. Um, in an emergency, if all you have is alcohol, then you can use alcohol, I suppose. The water would be better, but the alcohol is definitely something um, you don't want to do at all. This hearing deficit kind of thing can be related to the clogging of the, the small veins that feed the uh, ear. They can get clogged like that and cause the hearing to be impaired. Uh, you can increase the oxygenation of the cells with coenzyme Q10, which is a supplement. You can also increase the oxygenation of the cells with chlorophyll as well. Uh, sometimes we use uh, garlic oil in the ear to help rid it of impurities. Uh, but uh, in a situation like that, I would probably treat that like an arthritis condition of the ear uh, to help free up the toxins in the small vessels that feed the ear. That deals with the viscosity of the fluid of the inner ear. The fluid of the ear of Africans, you have this fluid inside of your ear and it has a lot of melanin in it. And the fluid in your ear is different from the fluid in any other race's ear. Uh, because of the melanin content of your ear, you're able to to, to smell sounds and, and, and see sounds and do a lot of different things that the Europeans can't do with the ear. It's the fluid of the ear that, that rubs against the hair in the ear that allows you to hear. Your hearing is based on your hair, and the condition of your hair indicates the condition of your hearing as well. So you can always measure the uh, hearing uh, propensity of a person by the hair, and you can measure the digestive uh, tract by the hair itself. So you would probably treat that condition similar to the way you would treat arthritis and someone who is going bald, which is probably uh, from 
most in most cases a spasm of the black muscles of the brain with black people they just get so tensed out and they get so stressed out that the flat muscles of their skull get tight and choke up the nutrients from getting to the hair. And a lot of times it's just flat out racism. They just get the ball from the crackers, you know. But they're looking for some kind of nutritional reason for that. But most is stress related. So I would treat that condition like the arthritis and someone losing their hair and probably clean up his bowels if they're locked. Um, he could use some foot soaks too to get the nutrients in. You can get a lot of nutrients in through the feet. Sometimes I have to go through the feet uh, to get the nutrients in in, in, a, in a rush. But uh, this ear business is not something to play with, actually, because uh, the viscosity of the fluid is measured that way. I don't like it at all. Um, I, I let, let us pray for this fellow, too. Um, I just don't like that at all. It doesn't sound good. No, because uh, it doesn't. You realize that seventy percent of the, the African children are losing their hearing in America. Uh, it has a lot to do with this, the Walkman that they walk in their head. Um, uh, they cause punctures in their eardrums, and this produces a chemical that I showed you that gets in the nervous system that decreases the ability of the person to feel good about themselves. This is done with simply by using that Walkman, that little white Walkman that they put in the ear that bypasses the skin here. The skin here transduces the sound so your ear can digest it. And you're bypassing the digestive system and going right into the ear, which you shouldn't do. The thing should be over the ear so the whole ear can vibrate. And then the sound can be transduced for the person. But when you violate that, it's that's something that a European would think of, I would say. Uh, it's just a natural impulse. But I would do those three systems there and stay away from that alcohol. If you just want to bring down a, a temperature, a fever, just use some fever fuel. And fever fuel will drop the temperature down in at least two hours at, at the minimum. It's a herb called fever fuel that breaks the temperature. It's also used for stress and migraines, headaches. It helps strengthen the nervous system. Yes, sir. What's that? What's that, my brother? Check, my check. Bro, just speak right into the mic. That way. Are you on? Okay. Um, I just have a brief comment. First of all, um, after hearing you lecture the first time, when you started doing some investigation, because you can't find anything you're not looking for. And as a result of that, um, I'd like people to know that the herbs and things that you mentioned, a lot of those are widely available. You can go to Walmart now. And they have a display. They have golden seal, echinacea, burdock, you name it, they got it in Walmart. So it's becoming more and more mainstream. Mm -hmm. Also, um, I have a copy of an article here that I clipped out of uh, Newsweek magazine. And it's uh, trumpeting the use of St. John's wort now as a uh, uh, treatment for mild depression, as, uh, as opposed to Prozac. And it goes on to detail all the drawbacks and the symptoms, like you were saying, the uh, allopathic and homopathic treatments, uh, how it induces side effects, and what they're saying is that with the herb, the St. John's wort, you don't get those side effects, so you don't get that similar illness or another illness. So um, as a result of my research, I find that uh, what Brother is saying is, is absolutely true and correct, and it's definitely a course to uh, take up and follow. Uh, just one question. You spoke about the uh, Great Plains Wheat Corporation, and you said uh, the acid, the acidity of the wheat. Um, now you got me I'm lost here because I'm eating a lot more wheat, a lot more wheat products, you know, the wheat bread, and nearly everything you get it has a wheat base to it. Could you give us a little, uh, little more detail on that? Mm, yeah, this is the, uh, well, it was probably a big mistake to introduce wheat to the Europeans anyway, to tell you the truth. Because they always take things and make it all bad. Mm. The thing with the wheat is, is, is cheap to produce, and they control the wheat market, and um, they use wheat to switch people off of their local crops and onto the wheat. And African ratio of acid in the body should be something in a ratio of about 20% acid, 80% alkaline, something in that ratio. So we should be eating more of like a millet bread or rice.
rice, bread, or silk, or kamut, or amaratha, or something of that sort. Rye would be ideal, because it's uh, alkaline, more alkaline than the others. But you have to be rather careful with rye, because they try to mix other grains with it. Um, the whole purpose for eating the grains, the bread, because African culture is not a bread-centered culture anyway. There are very few cultures in the world that eat bread. I mean, the Lord Sandwich came out with this idea anyway. Uh, it's a very vulgar way to eat your food. Um, but the Europeans were trying to stretch their food supply. And so they had a little bit of meat, and in order to stretch it, they put it between the bread. So like when they had a little bit of vegetation, in order to stretch it, they made the meat taste like vegetables. That's why you put the ketchup and onions and tomatoes on the meat, because they're trying to stretch the vegetables because they had a shortage of vegetation. So they kind of like piggyback these rides on by combining foods kind of weird. But the objective of the wheat is to make your acid as possible, and the high acid level kind of destabilizes your personality. It's kind of hard to achieve a kind of balance. And once you achieve the over uh, saturation of acid, then you become addicted. And therefore, you can become addicted to the wheat itself because of the chemical reaction of the wheat in your system. It was originally named Emmer, which is a word comes from Isis, uh, who was the uh, goddess of wheat. And I think uh, they gave Osiris barley, and it was originally associated with uh, a lady named Isis, I believe. And they put her on the uh, front of ships to protect the fer fertile ship when the ship had a lot of goods in its in the bottom of it, the ship was believed to be fertile and pregnant with goods, and they put the black lady on front of the ship. Uh, you may see it in older movies, you see this lady on the front of the ship, that was a black lady named Icy. Later on, they painted it into a white girl and gave her blonde hair and all that sort of disgusting thing. But the, the objective is, is to get off of the wheat as much as possible. We are not a wheat-centered eating people anyway. That's something that the Europeans are into. Get back to those uh, other kind of breads, millet, rice, silk, kamut. There's so many different kind of breads. There's sprouted bread made from plants alone. They call that mama bread. They don't add any oil, grease, or anything to it. It just sprouts, and it tastes uh, quite fine. Uh, the thing with the acid is uh, they usually put this milk in there. And when they put the milk in the bread, the milk stimulates the yeast infection of the brain and stomach. And when the yeast infection is triggered, it causes you to have a sweet craving. So it works out quite well to keep you acid because you're going to keep growing this yeast infection. Now, I'm not talking about a fungus infection, which ladies call a yeast infection of vagina. That's a fungus infection. I'm talking about a yeast infection. The, the wheat maintains a yeast infection, which causes a craving for sugar. So they have you in a seesaw. You eat a sandwich, then you want something sweet, because you trigger the yeast. Uh, briefly, I'd just like to ask you a question to comment briefly on the advantages of, or disadvantages of juicing, vegetable juicing, and things like that. Well, in the social condition that we live in, you have to do a lot of things in self-defense. First of all, uh, I stopped looking for air when I left South Carolina. I knew I was coming up here, praise God. Uh, so there's certain things you have to do once a week because you live in this condition with the radiation toxicity and the uh, water pollution and the air pollution. So you would need to take some mullein for your lungs and some echinacea and golden seal on a weekly basis, at least once a week, just take a, a lot of herbs. Maybe you don't know the names of anything, just just uh, pretend that they won't hurt you. I know they're not white and you're used to eating those white pills and think that the white medicine is good because it's white. You know, that's why Tylenol won't make black pills, you know that. So anyway, just start taking these green things, echinacea golden seal, some bilberry, some burdock, some dandelion, some chaparral, uh, chickweed, mullein, uh, just 
take yourself a nice herbal preparation at least once or twice a week in self-defense. Uh, it, it'll be good for you. And one of those things that's good for you is taking juice because you need the high amount of nutrients that you can get. You can't eat that amount of food. So another way of getting those vitamins and minerals and nutrients is to get it in a raw form, as they call it, and get it in the juice form because it's still alive. It still has the enzymes in it. Whereas the pills and the herbs and all that, they are dried, so they're basically kind of dead. But you want to put this life in your system, so a lot of people go into these juices. They'll juice carrot and beets, carrots and burdock, and carrot and spinach, dandelion, yams, potatoes. They'll just do a lot of juicing and all of the different varieties. Some people don't like the taste of these green juices, so they put an apple in it. They'll mix the apple with spinach, and then there, and uh, that's the collard greens, and kale and you put all these greens and make a green drink but the problem with the greens is they don't juice so well so you have to wrap the leaf around a carrot and then stick it in the juice or else you have to put the leaves in a blender and then mix it with some carrot juice to, to get it going on there but uh, I would say you need the juices raw juices in self-defense and to take some herbs in self-defense because we don't breathe like Africans anyway. We breathe like white people. You know, we're afraid we're not going to get the next breath, so we take a lot of shallow breaths. So we're not oxygenating ourselves too well. Because African people breathe deeper than any other race. Because the melanin has a way of bonding the oxygen electromagnetically to the cells. So we breathe the deepest. But we breathe like white people. And most of us, uh, well, we look at each other like we white because we look at each other's behinds. So we, we do a lot of white things. Uh, I was watching a fella who was looking at my wife's behind when we were in the store. <laughs> and I wanted to ask him, does he sell Charmin? You know, but I knew he was sexually going off, so I didn't want to disturb the brother because I saw he was foaming at the mouth or whatever the brothers do when they look at behinds. But I just wanted to ask him out of curiosity because he was looking at my wife behind and I was looking at her behind and I said, well, what's the deal here, you know? Because uh, I know how many rolls of toilet paper we use a week, so I, I don't really get fascinated looking at people's behind. But he was really getting off there. So we have to start breathing like an African also. I mean, some of us are still going to look at, you know, like... <laughs> You know, because, uh, you know, I saw a brother looking at a lady's behind. I'm not going to mention the behind, but I saw a brother looking at it behind uh, when I came in here. <laughs> Hello there. I have a statement. Because I know there's uh, uh, Brother Booker T. Coleman, mm -hmm. in his presentation, he's saying that we descended from apes, okay? Descended from what? Apes, like oh, oh, that, that okay. evolution. Process. And also, um, Diop, I think he sort of like leaning uh, in that direction mm -hmm. also in the evolution. Yeah, evolutionist, yeah. Okay, but what is your um, concept in, in terms of creation, how do we, you know, or... How do our ancestors, what did they, you know, in their mm -hmm. literature and all, what did they say about where yeah. we come from? Okay. The uh, creation theory is uh, very interesting. Uh, people have a re religious belief about how life came about, and they're entitled to that belief. Uh, people have some kind of philosophical belief of how life came about, and they're entitled to that philosophical belief. And there's no scientific evidence uh, that evolution occurred. There's no evidence that uh, 
that one plant evolved to another plant. Because evolution can go backwards or forward. I mean, there should be, if you reach a limit, then you go back and forth. But we think of evolution just going forward, but that's not true evolution. You go either way. What happens is, as I mentioned earlier, is about balance. Uh, nature plays adapt. Nature just tries to get you to adapt. Uh, the plants adapt to the environment, and we adapt to the plants. Uh, but the plants don't evolve to the environment, they just adapt. Uh, nature just does that. Uh, you have one foot that's bigger than you have to make an adaption for that. Uh, you have one eye that's bigger than the other. I mean, your body is constantly making these compensatory responses, but it's not trying to achieve balance, it's just trying to get along. It's trying to adapt. Uh, the uh, theory of evolution is that we came from some slime, one cell thing that floated in the sea. I don't know why the sea it could have floated in the space. Um, so they believed it floated in the sea and became a turtle, or, or, and then it crawled to the to land and crawled up in a tree. Why a tree? I don't know. Why didn't it take a subway? Who knows? So they crawled up in a tree and goofed around up there and got tired of that and then decided to uh, get out of the tree and walk around. Um, so that's what they believe um, occurred because they're evolutionists. They believe this kind of a theory and it's a belief. A theory is a scientific word for belief. So they believe these things and I have no problems with their belief but there's no evidence to show that there's any scientific basis for it at all. Um, the thing with God is God creates things and there's upper limits and lower limits to all creation. Um, your hand, despite what you may think, you may treat it like a hammer, but it will never evolve to a hammer. It has upper limits. What it's going to do is when it's created, it's created with these limitations, upper and lower limitations. Uh, so it's not going to evolve to anything else. You can treat it like a pointer, but it's not going to develop into a ruler. I mean. What's all this evolution thing that it's all about? I think they're searching for a way to prove their existence. Uh, all they need to do is be alive, and that proves they get the existence of God, and that's enough evidence for me. But they, uh, for some reason, want to prove that God is God by some scientific thing. But um, I uh, uh, have a relationship with God myself, and I don't think God made any mistakes. And I don't think God played, whoops, you know, made a little worm and said, oops, I meant to make a fish, involved it into a fish. And said, oops, I meant to make it into a crocodile, involved a fish into a crocodile. I think God made a fish. I think God made a pear tree, a peach tree. I think God made the air and the water. I don't think God evolved the sun into water and the, the water into the sun. I, I, I don't see any evidence of that at all. Uh, God made things the way they are. It's just that we have having problems figuring out where white people fit into things. You know, that's the, we, we, we're constantly trying to, to solve white people's problems. And we're trying to solve their problems with evolution. Uh, if white people don't know where they come from, fine. <laughs> we were created by God. I'm all right with that. That's for, that's for white people, they want to come from a monkey, you know, it's fine. I mean, white people have a lot of problems, you know. I mean, they still have sex with each other, you know. The mother rapes the daughter, the daughter rapes the tadpole, they both sleep with a dog, you know, and they, and they give their whole fortunes to an animal when they die. I mean, these people get, you know, but that, that's white people, and I expect them to do crazy things. But the one thing to remember is that um, they are European trained scientists and they still have a big chunk of their uh, uh, um, uh, damage done to them by the European education. I think Carter J. Wilson said it took him 30 years to get over his European education. <laughs> uh, so a lot of that, and then Diop is a Frenchman, you have to remember that. He married a white girl, and to him, that's what a Frenchman does. Oh yeah, he's a Frenchman. Oh, yeah, he married a white girl. It's, uh, you know, Frederick Douglass married a white girl, too, you know. And Lou Rawls, and Sidney Poitier, and Quincy Jones, 
um, you know, an Arsenio, he, whatever he does, I don't know what he's doing lately. I don't even want to know. Uh, you know, it's, it's part of that damage that's done by white supremacy to us all. It's, we still have uh, the effect of that in our science because we never clean up the white racism in science. We just take science to mean science. But science is a language of a culture. In order to be an African scientist, you have to be into African culture or else you won't see it as an African. You'll see two cells together and you say, oh, that's cell division, mitosis. Because you're looking at science like a white man. But you look at it like an African, you see a cell with a baby and the cell has a baby. You don't call a mother having a child mother division. When you see two cells have a, another cell, the white boys say divide and conquer, so this is part of division. I mean, because they see, you can only see with the eyes of your culture, because your culture teaches you how to see, and your culture teaches you how to hear and how to smell. All of these are culturally specific, and science is the language of a culture. Until you get into the culture, you can't get into the science. So I think that uh, they studied the European science, and no one has won in and said, this is the racism in the science. So they took it hook, line, and sinker to be science. And I, a lot of things that the white boys say is just absolutely stupid. I mean, they say some dumb stuff, and uh, they don't particularly like me in the classroom situation. You know, uh, I've been offered to leave a few classes before. Because <laughs> uh, they, they say some stupid things. Um, I, 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 that's another lecture, of course, where I just go through one little stupid thing that they say after another. But I do like uh, a lot of, uh, you know, Diop's work is quite well, it's good work. Um, and uh, Coleman, he has a philosophical approach to things and a religious approach to things. It's quite nice. Uh, life is not conceived in blood. I mean, a lot of people think you're just blood and your life comes out of blood. But the, <laughs> the, the sperm wraps around a crystal called melanin and it puts, carries that crystal of melanin into the egg, it has nothing to do with blood exchange at all. It has something to do with melanin exchange and melanin bonding, uh, the whole process of conception. Aside from the fact that it's tuned and it has, it deals with colors. Uh, you have these 12 color gradations that occur and you have these 12 different rhythms that occur. It was explained in the snake ritual that the uh, uh, Africans taught for these little, uh, Asian races Chinese, you know, they had the 12 uh, steps of the zodiac and they did this snake dance. With the, you see the Chinese do this dragon dance? Mm -hmm. That's the African uh, uh, snake dance, a uh, re regeneration, re fertilization. Uh, a lot of our African ceremonies we taught to the Chinese. Remember the Chinese are, are primitive people. Remember that we were here before the American Indians. Remember we had these mounds they found in the African mounds here in America that they say belong to America. Now they find out they're ours. Now they're finding out, now that, not that they I'm talking about as white people, they're always late finding out things. And when they do find out something, they discover it. You know, you know please. But I, I'm trying to say it's, it's a lot of racism in science. And a lot of people have not conquered that and they will not conquer that because it's so embedded in us to see, to see science as being something that's universal and science is not universal. I do not agree with Japanese scientists because I'm not a Japanese. And I do not agree with European scientists because I am not a European. And if Europeans believe that they have sibling robbery and the brother wants to screw the father for the mother's attention or whatever they go, I, I say, yes, that's right. Y'all do have some problems, you know, you know. I agree with them. I say, yeah, y'all did come from out of a tree. Yeah, 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 yeah. I agree with them, totally. And I'm looking for a cage to put them all in. I want to make a zoo of European animals, like they got our animals in zoos all over this country. Get to all my nerves. I'm gonna make myself a little zoo for white people to come to. I'm gonna put little rats in the cage. I'm gonna call it European Zoo. But see, won't nobody come. I won't make no money. <laughs> Who's gonna come and see a rat eating food stamps? Oh, what's the next question? Oh, Chuck, doctor. Oh, Chuck. I have two questions. One is dealing with uh, a problem that we have here in the uh, United States, is, uh, especially in our culture, which is diabetes. 
And the second one is dealing with an incident that has been reoccurring. I've been seeing it through my wife and now through an assistant, is they're having chest pains. Can you uh, deal with that? Uh, diabetes mellitus, better known as sugar, it's a good hustle. Uh, and they cut off the foot first, and they cut off the below the knee appetation, and they cut below the, below the hip appetation, so they get three operations out of one. Yeah, so it's a good hustle, and 60% uh, of black people suffer from it. It's a very devastating disease. It comes from the uh, natural sweet tooth of African people. You come from a tropical country. You used to eating plums, <laughs> you know, mangoes, papayas, and watermelons, and cat. You used to eating all this sweet fruit, and the white folks got you addicted to white sugar, and then you try to get rid of your sweet tooth, which is an African sweet tooth, so now you're fighting your own nature. You're not going to win at all, and they know it's a very slick thing to do. So they have people addicted to this white sugar, which is a chemical, and they put the sugar in everything. They put sugar in milk, they spray sugar on tobacco, they put sugar in aspirin, they put sugar in salt, they put sugar in everything, sugar in mustard, sugar in ketchup, sugar in mayonnaise. They put sugar in everything that you wouldn't even imagine. They put the, uh, a lot of, in the medicines, you know, children's medicines, not the syrup. Let's just face that. And then they have these little sugar balls that they hide, they say it's breath freshness, nothing but sugar. Then they have sugar flavored corn flakes. Nothing but sugar. No corn, just mostly sugar. And it's such a markup on the sugar. A 10 cents worth of sugar in the package by Kellogg's Sugar Frosted Flakes with Tony the Tiger, whatever's wrong with that little pervert. I've had some questions about Tony for a long time, you know? So they have this sugar flavored corn flakes. So the sugar's a, a 10 cents a pound, but when they put it in, in that box, then it goes up to $150 a pound. So they're selling the sugar at the price of corn. Mm -hmm. Just like they sell wheat at the price of chicken. They dip the, the kernels chicken in the, in, the, in the batter or the fish in the batter. Now they're selling you the wheat at the price of fish. Oh, they're really slick with the sugar thing. But the thing about the, the sugar is, is they added more chemicals to it. Back in 1950, oh yeah, it was only about 20 chemicals in it. But now they got over 50 chemicals in that sugar. They, they have the hormones in it. They have the, they, of course, they purify by using the blood of pigs and cattle, so it's made out of pork anyway. And these chemicals that they get from the blood are the hormones and all the stuff they put in the pigs. And all the stuff they put in the beef is in the sugar now. Because they're using contaminated blood. Because the blood is it's very hard to purify blood. All blood is contaminated. So now they're using contaminated blood to purify your sugar, which in itself is a crazy concept. Now the, the sugar causes an, a, a, the, the pancreas to get weak, which causes a pancreas disease. And how you weaken the pancreas is, or any other organ is to destroy the melanin. So the sugar attacks what we call the Isles of Langerhaus, which is the melanin centers in the pancreas. Mm -hmm. All drugs work by attacking the melanin. If they don't attack the melanin, they're not a drug at all. So the sugar bonds to the Isles of Langerhaus, which are the melanin centers in the pancreas. Because the melanin bonds to it, you are twice as addicted to sugar as a white person, because you have 12 melanin centers, remember, and they only have two. So their brain centers can only activate those but they only have two melanin centers to activate their, their pancreas, where you have 12 coming at it. So now you're, you're 12 times more addicted to the white sugar. But nonetheless, you know white is right, so we eat stuff. Now, aside from the sugar itself, the bleach white flour turns into sugar. That's wheat. The sugar turns into alcohol. Therefore, now you're addicted to the sugar, you're addicted to acid, and you're addicted to alcohol, or things that are close to alcohol, like acidic acid, which you call vinegar. Now you have to have vinegar on everything, which you call hot sauce, because you have a craving for the alcohol, and you have a craving for the sugar, and you have a craving for the acids and the hormones. All this is packaged in the sugar deal. Aside from the fact that it 
toxic to the lower pelvic area, your reproductive organs, which causes a rush of blood to come to your pelvic girdle to get rid of the sugar. Therefore, sugar becomes sexually stimulating. Oh, this is a very sick game here. Now they have these different names for sugar. You're looking for sugar, but you're not looking for dextrin. Mm -hmm. And since they said we used to make sugar from corn, can't we call it corn syrup? And it's nothing but white sugar. So now you read there, it says white sugar, it says sugar, corn syrup, dextrin, three sugars. They're putting all of these sugars in the substance, but sugar has over 30 different names. How are you gonna know? They're loading us the substance up with all of this sugar. Now you have the flour, which turns into sugar, and all flour that's sold in the store is cooked because the mills cook it. It's when you buy it, it's cooked. It's sort of like oatmeal. When you buy oatmeal by that Quaker or Croker, whatever his name is, when you buy it by that, that little devious little, he has a little slimy smile on his face anyway. I never trusted that guy. I never trusted that Quaker boy. All the oatmeal is cooked by the mill. When they mill it and make it flat, it cooks it. So we know the flour is cooked and the oatmeal is cooked. So now you're buying the flour, which turns into alcohol, which turns into sugar, and you're eating sugar too. And the sugar has other sugars in it. Besides the sugar that's in it, they have other sugars in it. Now they spray some burnt caramel on it to give it a color. Now they're gonna call the white sugar brown sugar, they're gonna call the white sugar turbinado sugar, they're gonna call the white sugar raw sugar. They changed the name, it's still sugar. So you look on the label, it's gonna say brown sugar, corn syrup, dextrin, you bought 12 sugars and wonder what in the heck is going on with you. You're addicted to the sugar. The sugar destroys the pancreas, the melanin centers in the pancreas, and that's what you call diabetes mellitus, the inability to break down the produce the enzyme called amylase. Aside from the fact that your body doesn't produce the enzyme called sucrase, which is used to break down white sugar in the first place, you don't have the enzyme to break it down. Aside from the fact that sugar cane comes from India, it's not even African food. Oh, so usually I treat this disease with bilberry. Now I'm gonna load the person up with the bilberry. They're taking tablets, they're gonna take at the minimum 12 tablets a day. See, people under the mistaken belief that the serving on the supplement label means a dosage. But since it's a food, when you buy them in capsules, they only list a serving. Mm -hmm. Like a half a cup will make, a half a cup of grits will make equal four servings. Right. So they say take two tablets three times a day. That is a serving. It has nothing to do with therapy. So usually I'm telling the person to take 12 or 20 a day. I'm gonna take all them pills. I said, well, you're sick, ain't you? <laughs> well, no, I can't take all them pills, so I end up having to go to a liquid. You know, but I've seen these people stuff a whole bird or one, <laughs> one shot <laughs> in their mouth. And they talking about, I can't take those pills. <laughs> so I'm going to use about, <clears throat> at the minimum, 12 bilberries. Then I'm going to come back with vanadyl sulfate, which is technically called vanadium. But vanadyl sulfate is V-A-N-A-D-Y-L, sulfate. And I'm going to use at least, oh, I would say 12 of them a day. And that alone, now these two alone will heal the pancreas within four to six months. I mean, get rid of insulin and all that's gone. As long as I have, I had to use this in six months. Four months, I'm using to get the person off insulin, period, on this regimen. Sometimes I have to increase the dosage. But see, the problem with diabetics is they're the worst ones to stick to a diet. They're, the after, they're always cheating, they're hiding stuff, chewing gum here, candy bar there. You know, they're very dangerous people. So what you have to do is treat the addiction. If you don't treat the addiction, you will not get them off of the sugar.
you know, he's, he's been on, he's been disabled, hundreds of things, he's 19, he's cracking, he's got his table, table full of medicine on a regular basis. And I brought him to the fire in there at one point. I said, take it to the wife and ask him. He had a push, but he said, he had a still push. And he said, yeah, but the doctor explained to him, uh, uh, well, uh, something for the girl or something. So automatically, since the doctor endorsed it, then say, he said, Greg, you take it, but I don't think it's going to work for me. You know, he kind of got to it off. So I went to take him a copy of the video off of it, and he got to the record. This is a father type person. Well, I don't think he's going to listen to you. They don't normally do that. It's hard to raise your mother and father. They don't really listen too well. You know, they really don't. You can't send them to their room. You can't punish them. It's very difficult. But um, that's the way I normally do that, and, and it's addiction. You, 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 you can't go past that. He may stick to it, but addiction will get him. See, they, diabetics and other people learn how to manipulate doctors to have their way. That people are doctor junkies. And they manipulate doctors and they manipulate uh, children and, and their parents. Like if you're trying to get off a chicken and you say, I'm trying to get off a chicken and you, I had to go see my mother, it was Sunday. She always cooked chicken on Sunday. I didn't want to hurt her feelings, you know. <laughs> so now they're using their mother to support their addiction, you know. The mother's completely innocent about this thing. But see, people, they manipulate people to support their addiction and you're not watching the other layers of the addiction. You have to get rid of the craving. I use glutamine to get rid of the craving, the amino acids I showed you up there. I'm, I'm treating addiction now. That's altogether different. Because the addiction is mental, physical, and spiritual with African people. rate of your body. Say, for instance, if I was talking about uh, four fever few capsules, if your body was at 100% proficiency, that means you had nothing wrong with you whatsoever, you at your best could metabolize three of those capsules. Now, supposedly you were ill and your body's not able to function at its optimum, now you're down to about two. So out of four capsules, all you're going to be able to get is two. But that's an athlete in top condition can get that much out of, out of it. Now we're saying that you're having a disease and your digestive system may be clogged up and pasty, bleach white flour or something like that. That means you're not able to absorb all the nutrients from those four pills. So now you're down to one. So out of four, you're probably getting one. And that's just based on the normal metabolic thing. Now, if you're waking up with a headache, you more than likely may be staring at night. People go to sleep and they stare. They actually stare with their eyes and they wake up with tired eyes or headaches because they're staring at, at night. I don't know whether they're not sure they're going to see their dreams or what their process is, but they stare at night. And that's one of the indications of it. You can have what people commonly call an allergic reaction, which can produce the migraines. I would look at that, and I would look at balancing the hormone level, making sure that's all right there. But what you're doing is treating the uh, 
migraines with the fever few, but you are not stimulating your pineal gland, so the treatment is not going to hold too well. You will probably need to take either a St. John's wort or a um, rosemary or a ginkgo or go to cola with that regimen uh, in order to stimulate your pineal gland so you can hold the treatment better. I, um, well, you seem to have anterior pituitary problems anyway, so that's another issue. Mm. And then you seem to be running on adrenal and energy, which is another issue altogether. So you need to take something adjacent to that, something similar to a panathenic acid, because you're running adre on adrenal energy, which is not the same as liver energy. Um, and then you have anterior pituitary problems. And... Well, you seem to be a nice person. Um, increase the fever view. Take it in a four to one ratio with St. John's wort. Uh, that's what I would say off the top of my head. Well, are you using a natural deodorant? Are you using a natural toothpaste? Tom? Uncle? <laughs> oh, yeah, 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 okay. Well, you can use Tom. Uh, use the natural soap. Dove? <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, switch to a natural soap. Uh, it's white, isn't it? <laughs> oh, it's pink. Oh, worried. All right. Okay. <laughs> no, but try to, you know, I'm trying to uh, reduce the things that may cause an allergic reaction in your system. That's what I was looking at. And, uh, how many bad moments you have a day? Oh, one. Is it well formed? Uh, does it look like little misguided hot dogs? Oh, best indication of constipation. You have to increase your bowel movements. Yeah, you're gonna need to take a have at least three a day. Yeah. Off the top of my head, I would say increase your bowel movements. If you have a well-formed bowel movement, that's a sign of constipation. It should be rather mushy. It should float in the toilet. It should float. It shouldn't sink in the toilet and go on its own way. You know. It should, it should kind of like float. Uh, how much water are you drinking? <laughs> oh, that's very good. I would suggest you do something with your liver, your pancreas, and increase your bowel movements and. Uh, uh, well, you seem to be a nice person. Oh, we can talk later. <laughs> Let's give Dr. Ashton a warm round of applause for the system. There'll be available to sign copies of your books. If you, have, if you have a book, if you bring a book, or you need to buy one, it's over on the table.